This is a famous, famous Dutch book made by the Dutch radio amateur Mr. Carver, uh, issued in The Hague in the Netherlands. And it was uh, written quite a long time ago, 1929. And in those days, uh, the radio. Uh, technology had to be developed. It was already quite a little bit developed, but uh, radio amateurs have um, given a big uh, attribution to the development of the radio. So I want to show some circuits from this book and especially the super regenerative radio reception. This is a normal uh, radio schematic from those days, 1930. At first a triode uh, to the grid. There was um, a tank circuit connected to the antenna. And this was a transformer coupling to the second um, uh, tube. And here we could hear the audio signal. So the audio reception from the different radio stations that were active in those days. Germany, France, England, the Netherlands, etc. etc. Um, I want to show some pictures. This picture for instance. Beautiful old old school way to make radio. Three coils here. Um, a three fold tuning capacitor here. They are still available on radio markets but not very easy to find. That was one of the uh, reception principles. Uh, when you had three, uh, three coils, three um, input coils, three tank circuits, then you can tune in with all these two, sorry, with these three uh, tubes very precisely. Every tube, every tank circuit amplified uh, adds more to the selectivity from the uh, radio reception that is finally received. Here again the same circuit. Selectivity was also a problem in those days because many radio stations from all over Europe got in the air and when it was dark all these radio stations could influence each other. And that's the reason why later the superheterodyne principle was uh, developed and the selectivity from a superheterodyne radio is extremely good. Here also a picture from an old radio schematic and here is um, a meter for shortwave. I've published this circuit also on YouTube. Uh, when this meter, in fact it's nothing more or less than this thing, a tank circuit with variable coils. Here I've drawn one coil you see different coils for different frequencies. When such a tank circuit receives something and you can tune such a tank circuit here with the help of the capacitor, you hear a kind of click. So lit literally here we see a so-called click wave meter for short wave from 1930. Okay, we go to um, another part in the book that I wanted to show and that's all about a reception principle that's called super regenerative radio reception. Um, and that is a kind of 
radio reception where we have a tank circuit tuned to say a frequency on shortwave uh, especially for the higher frequencies 50 megahertz approximately or 40 megahertz this was a good simple way to receive radio stations here is a tank circuit that's tuned to say 40 megahertz and uh, the good thing from this type of radio reception is that uh, the radio circuit here, the tube or the transistor, is set almost to generate. And we have, when we have, um, when we receive a radio station here, the reception is at its most sensitive point. So uh, the peak from the radio signal is at its best. This is the peak say on 40 megahertz the peak is at its best when a, a little bit of radio signal is amplified is sent back to the reception coil and then um, makes the coil almost to generate so then the coil gets very very sensitive uh, to receive radio stations but that's of course a big problem. Um, here is, we see for instance such a super regenerative radio um, from 1930. It's a big problem because we always we have to keep these two coils uh, very critically coupled so that it almost doesn't almost generates and that differs uh, with the frequency. The coupling differs with the frequency. So that's the reason why another invention was made by Mr. Armstrong in America. I think also approximately in 1930 or so. And uh, there was a separate oscillator added in uh, this frequency band, 10 kilohertz up to 20 kilohertz that pinched off constantly in this frequency um, the generation process. So it kept the, uh, the input coil where we receive the radio stations at its maximum sensitivity. Uh, the not very good thing from this circuit is that it gives an extreme noise when there is no radio reception. So this is one of the, the principles. External oscillator, but it's also possible to make a time depending circuit on, in this frequency band and integrate it here in the, uh, the tube radio part or the transistor. So with uh, super reg receivers, they are suitable for to receive uh, uh, AM and FM frequency modulated uh, radio signals we we have a situation where the input coil the the antenna coil is constantly kept at its maximum uh, sensitivity with the help of such an oscillator external oscillator or inside inside the the reception uh, unit that's visible here I hope I could explain this a little bit. It's quite difficult to explain. But okay, let's look here on the next pages on photographs from super reg receivers from the 1930. This is one, for instance. And you could see here this. We call it in Dutch a raam antenna. Uh, I can say it's a window antenna, something like that. I don't know the exact um, word for this in English or American, but this is the antenna. Here we have the 
electronic unit. And this is the backside from that super rack receiver from 1930. Two capacitors, two tunable capacitors here, and one tube. And this antenna with that cap sets the frequency band. Uh, super rack is still a principle that was used up until now. Simple uh, walkie talkies, for instance, from Chinese uh, manufacturers now in 2016 use this super rack principle. Um, um, especially cheap walkie talkies. And it's a simple way to make a very, very a sensitive radio receiver. I hope I can find finally some other interesting things to show from this book. This for instance, this is called a, a T antenna or a V antenna, I think. I don't know that exactly. I have to read a complete article. This was an old reception building in Samsbeek, Sambeek, in the Netherlands, etc, etc. All kinds of old uh, ways to construct an antenna for shortwave. Interesting book from a very, very important Dutch radio amateur from the 20s and the 30s, 1920, 1930, etc.